I got kimchi juice in my eye. No, no. Am I blind? Welcome back to Cheap Lazy Vegan and another episode of Munching Mondays, which is my mukbang slash eating show series. Today, we are eating yet another vegan Korean meal, or should I say feast? Today, I want to kind of continue my story with how I started my YouTube channel and all of that stuff, okay? How I became a full-time YouTuber because I realized the last video where I talked about this, I didn't actually like really finish the story, so... I thought I would continue it in today's video. And while I'm talking, I'm going to be feasting on this delicious Korean style meal. Korean people, we believe in the power of variety, my friends. This is why I like to eat a variety, I feel. Whenever I have a meal, I don't really like to have just one little thing. I like to have many different types of things so that my taste buds are just constantly excited, <laughs> which is probably why I eat a lot. We are all about a variety, which is why when you go to a Korean restaurant, they will give you 5 million side dishes. Usually a Korean home cooked meal would consist of like a bowl of rice and then a few different side dishes. Maybe there might be one like main dish and then a few different side dishes, okay? So today I have a bowl of brown rice. We have some seaweed. This is roasted seaweed. I'll show you the pack. Oh, I don't have the packaging. <laughs> but it's like one of those roasted seaweed packages which has basically seasoned and dried roasted seaweed. This is very, very common in a Korean household. And I also stole something from my roommate. <laughs> Hi, Angela. Hello. So this is kongjorim, which is braised black beans. This is a very common Korean side dish as well. This is just store-bought. She just bought this at the Korean supermarket, but my mom knows how to make this. Let me talk to my mom. Okay. And then we've got some Korean green peppers, which I've eaten before on my channel, which I love so much and I'm obsessed with. And this works as a great side dish as well. I'll show you guys how I eat it. And then we have just a random piece of an avocado because I just had an avocado and I don't want to let it go to waste. So I'm going to eat that as well. Uh, this isn't really Korean, by the way. This isn't really like traditional Korean, but I have it. So there we go. And then the star of the show, which is this kind of Korean egg type thing. So I wanted to make my version of a Korean egg roll. This is a very, very common side dish in Korea. Korean people make it all the time, especially at home. It's very common. I grew up eating this and I feel like I can perfect a vegan recipe for this. Maybe not perfect, but I can get something close to perfection maybe. Maybe it won't look as good. I tried to roll it up. As you can see, it doesn't like look that great, but um, I think it's gonna taste pretty good, guys. And I think once I have the proper formula for this, I believe I will have this recipe in my ebook that is coming up. My brand new ebook that I'm working on, which is an Asian vegan recipes ebook. I'm so excited. Uh, I think it's going to be awesome. Uh, there's going to be some really, really unique recipes in there. There's going to be recipes from my childhood that I veganized. There's going to be lots of kind of Asian fusion style dishes as well. 100% vegan, of course. And I'm stoked. I can't wait for you guys to see it. Of course, they're gonna be easy recipes because you guys know me, I don't like to make things difficult. But yeah, if you guys wanna get some updates on the progress of the ebook when it's coming out, we haven't decided yet on the release, but I'm working very hard on it, so I'm hoping that it's gonna be released pretty soon. Yeah, if you guys wanna get some updates on that or get some recipes into your ebook, e-box recipes into your inbox or just general updates from me period then you can sign up for my email newsletter link is down below and yeah oh and of course can't forget the most important thing which is kimchi this is korean spicy fermented cabbage aka kimchi this is the most traditional korean thing ever this is something that every single korean has in the fridge and this is my mom's version of it. She makes the best vegan Korean kimchi. The recipe is actually available on my channel. And I feel like I need to start digging in because I am hungry. So, with this keramari situation, or vegan egg roll type thing, I'm going to add some ketchup. Because that's how I used to eat it, guys. It's all the same thing. I just uh, rolled one of them. I tried to roll anyway. And then one of them is just flat. So... Yeah, all right. 
All right, guys, I'm just gonna dig in and go straight for the Korean egg roll imitation. Mmm. Guys, whether or not it tastes like the egg roll, which I think it definitely tastes quite like egg, whether or not that is the case, it's just really good tasting, just in general. Even if it's not trying to imitate anything, it just tastes good. Oh, I can't wait for you guys to get the recipe. Again, I have to perfect it, like the, the texture, but I think we're almost there. And then this is the seaweed. I just like to take a bit of rice and roll it up. All right, I'm gonna go in with this kongjorim, braised beans. Mm. Tastes like my childhood. <laughs> it's a little bit sweet for me. My mom makes a better version. Okay. <laughs> and then this is Korean green pepper. And then you dip it and there's Korean dipping sauce, which I have a recipe for on my channel. Link is below. Mm. Some people might think this is weird, but it's so refreshing. Mm. So good. Water. Cheers from my cheap lazy vegan mug. Mm. Oh, delicious. All right, so I thought I would talk about my YouTube story. I can't remember where I left off, but I know I didn't finish the story. Although I think I like went through the journey of me starting the channel. So if you guys haven't seen that video, I'll link that down below. That's like part one of like how I went from full time, you know, nine to five jobs to starting my YouTube channel and all that. So I was working in London, I started my YouTube channel, and I had my channel for about a year, a little over a year actually. And then I had to leave London because my visa had expired. And then I moved back to Canada, and that is when I started my channel full time. Mm. Mm. Kimchi. Mm. So basically, before I moved back to Canada, I had had my YouTube channel for a year. And at that point, I had about 100,000 subscribers. I had just hit 100,000 subscribers, which, I mean, I was very lucky. I'm sure if I started much later, it would have been harder, much harder to get to 100,000 subscribers. And I'm not saying I didn't work hard. I still did. But also, you know, I was kind of in the right place at the right time. So anyways, I had 100,000 subscribers at the end of my working holiday visa in London. So then I was kind of starting to think about maybe I could potentially do this full time because I had met some people that were doing YouTube full time and you know they may have had maybe even less subscribers than I did. So I was starting to gather information. You know, it's very hard when you're just kind of trying to figure things out on your own without that much information about this. It was hard to find information and it was it's always hard to like know if you're going to be able to make a full-time income especially when i wasn't making a full-time income at the time so even though i had a hundred thousand subscribers i was definitely nowhere near a full-time income nowhere near mm -hmm. let me show you how i eat the avocado oh i wish i had some um soy sauce it's okay, I don't need it. Let's make a mini sushi roll. 
avocado, roasted seaweed, and rice. Mmm. So good. I'm gonna put some avocado on here. It's gonna break. Just break it. <laughs> Boop. Mmm. Mmm. That's so good with avocado too. Mm. Whew, kimchi's a bit spicy. So yeah, I had 100,000 subscribers. I was making a part-time income on YouTube. I still didn't know fully how to make a full-time income, but I had to leave London anyway, and I was out of a job anyway because my job was a contract role, and that was over, and plus my visa was expired, so I had to move back to Canada. I didn't have a job. So I didn't have a job, I didn't have anything lined up. I was going back to live with my parents for a bit anyway. And so I thought this is a perfect opportunity for me to give this a go because it's not like I have to actually physically quit a job because I know a lot of people have to make that decision, which would be so much harder, I think. If I had to actually make the decision to quit a full-time job to pursue YouTube full-time, that would be a much more difficult decision for me to make. But thankfully, because I kind of didn't have a choice, <laughs> I was kind of just thrown in there. So I was like, okay, this is my chance to try to do this full time instead of wasting my time trying to find a job in a field that I may or may not even enjoy. I can finally maybe do something that I really like. By the way, I get these green peppers at the Korean supermarket. They're slightly spicy, but they're not super spicy. You can't get like jalapeno peppers though. Do not do this with jalapeno peppers. You'll probably die. <laughs> so, so I gave myself a deadline, guys. I gave myself a year deadline. Basically, my goal was to make a full-time salary. So basically equivalent of what I was making before as a full-time employee, which I mean, to be honest, it wasn't like that much money, but um, basically my goal was to make that full-time salary within a year. So get to that point within a year. So yeah, a year deadline I gave myself. So I got to work, you know? Well, I traveled first. <laughs> so after my visa was over, I went traveling. Mm. Mm. Oh my god, I can't wait to share this recipe. Who is excited for the Asian ebook? And after my visa was over, I went traveling in Europe for about two and a half months. I mostly went to Eastern Europe, although I started in Italy. I went to Sicily and then I went to Milan. And then, oh my God, where did I go after that? I think I went to Berlin, Romania. I'm probably forgetting some countries right now. Oh my gosh, it's been a long time. Croatia, Montenegro. I can't remember the rest. Anyways, <laughs> it's not important to the story. Hello, does my hair look so tidy? So I went to those uh, countries. I went traveling for a while. Um, I still posted YouTube videos during that time. And then I moved back to Canada in the end of August or beginning of September. And then I went to work, guys. I started working, okay? I was working, working, and working. So I started really delving into my work. I started working on an ebook in October. So that was my first ebook, which is still available for purchase if you guys are interested in really easy overall vegan recipes again link is below so i worked on that ebook and basically i had set a deadline for a year but i think within four months i hit my goal of being able to earn a full-time income yay 
So that is how I did it. The ebook um, really helped me get to that point. I worked on the ebook really, really diligently for like two months. I got it out in like two months. I did everything myself, and that is still a big source of my income. AdSense alone is not going to do it, you know? Advertising revenue on YouTube is it's still a pretty big chunk of my income, but it's, it's not even half of what I make as a total. So, yeah, that is my story. <laughs> I hope that's interesting. I don't know if it is, but yeah. It wasn't like an easy, smooth journey, of course. There's always gonna be hard times. You know, there's a lot of times when I had to come home from work after a long day of working and I worked on my YouTube channel. I filmed, I edited, but to me it was fun, you know? So even if I had to like do some work after I was done a day of work and even if I was tired, it still was enjoyable for me, you know? That's what it is. Um, if I were to give advice to oh, look at this giant green pepper if I were to give advice to anyone that's interested in YouTube I would say most important thing most important thing have a niche or niche as you American people call it guys it's niche not niche <laughs> have a niche niche meaning a specific thing that you do stop trying to be general stop trying to appeal to everyone that's the number one mistake a lot of people make is they try to appeal to the masses and that my friends, is extremely difficult to do. And even people that do appeal to the masses still have a niche market that they focus on. That is Marketing 101, guys. And this isn't just with YouTube. This is with like every other business, okay? Every other business. Look at my cafe, for example, my vegan cafe. Before it was a vegan cafe, it was a general cafe. Didn't really have a niche, didn't have a target market. Now it's a vegan cafe. Now we get so much more business because it's it's specific even though vegans are a very small percentage of the population so you know some people might think well you're only appealing to vegans well the results show otherwise okay because if you're trying to appeal to everybody you end up appealing to nobody that as somebody said before someone in the marketing industry what is it if you try to please everybody you please nobody or something like that i don't know something like that That's tip number one for you. I think the reason why my channel became successful was because at that time when my channel was released, there weren't other channels or at least not many other channels that were focused on cheap and easy and lazy vegan recipes or meal ideas or whatnot. So that was my target market. That was my niche. Okay, it wasn't just vegan because vegan was already not specific enough. Okay, you would think that vegan is already very specific because it's such a small subset of the population. But now I feel like the more specific you are, the better. I mean, that's just one part of it. Okay, so that's my tip number one. Tip number two, if you want to be a YouTuber, if you want to create content, do not be a perfectionist. If you are a perfectionist, you're going to have a very hard time, in my opinion. Especially on YouTube. Hmm. Okay. Guys, this, this vegan egg situation.
<laughs> That's my tip number two. Can't be a perfectionist. YouTube is not about perfection. I mean, of course, if your job is like, I don't know, videography, and you want to showcase your perfect videography skills, that would be different. But if you're trying to be like a personality on YouTube, if you want to make a channel based around whatever topic you want to talk about, if you're trying to be a perfectionist and make everything look beautiful and amazing and perfect, A, you probably won't get that much work done because it's very time consuming. YouTube videos in general are very time consuming, even if you're not a perfectionist. So if you are a perfectionist, I don't know when you're going to get any of this done, you know? I love that crunch. That piece of kimchi. Now I think you can be a perfectionist on maybe on Instagram. Because Instagram is really about the aesthetics and how good everything looks, which is probably why my Instagram is not as popular as my YouTube. YouTube is more about, you know, the realness, you know? I feel like some channels literally put zero effort, but because they're so real or they're just entertaining, they get like so many views. You know what I mean? I don't know, maybe Instagram's changing, but I think a lot of uh, Instagram pages are just beautiful and very aesthetic. It's just a very different platform compared to YouTube. What's my third tip? I don't know what my third tip is. I think the most important thing is that you care about whatever you're doing on YouTube because, I mean, chances are you're not gonna make money on YouTube. You know, most people don't. But think about how many videos are being posted on YouTube every single day. It's not about money. I mean, yes, it is about money, but it's also not about money, if that makes sense. When I started, obviously I wasn't sure if I was going to make money or not. I don't want to say it's not about money, because obviously this pays the bills, you know? So it is about money to an extent, but when you start doing it, don't do it because you think you're going to make a lot of money. <laughs> because you probably will be disappointed, to be honest. Mmm, that's spicy. Sometimes the ends are really spicy. <laughs> Last piece of avocado. Mmm. I guess my third tip for people that want to be on social media in general would be to pick the right platform. So this kind of goes with me saying, like, don't be a perfectionist on YouTube. You have to pick the right platform that suits you, okay? For me, like I said, I was on Instagram for a year before I started my YouTube channel. I think I only had about, I mean, not only, but I had about 2,000 subscribers, not subscribers, 2,000 followers or so on Instagram within that year of me starting Instagram. So in a year on Instagram, I only had 2,000 followers. And then a year of YouTube, I got 100,000 followers. So the platforms clearly are very different because I'm on the both platforms, but clearly I suit YouTube better. Some people suit Instagram much better. I met a lot of people during that time, and I still see a lot of people to this day, that have a lot more followers on Instagram and use Instagram as their main platform versus YouTube. So clearly for me, my platform that works best for me is probably YouTube or video or this kind of more personable content rather than um, 
like a really aesthetic image because I know that's not my forte. You know, my forte isn't taking really, really beautiful, perfected photos. My forte is basically just, you know, just showing you kind of the real side of things and that kind of stuff, you know, being real, you know? So you need to like figure out what's your forte. I'm not saying one thing is better than the other because like I said, some people are really big on Instagram and that's how they make their income or that's just their main platform. They may have a YouTube channel that's much smaller. I've seen that many, many times. And I was always confused as to why that was, but now I think I know. It's just because my strengths are better catered to YouTube rather than Instagram. Although I still like Instagram. And now I finally have over 100,000 followers on Instagram. That took me a year to do on YouTube, okay? And I had Instagram for so long. <laughs> Mm. Oh man. I'm done my rice, folks. I don't think I'm gonna whoop! I got kimchi juice in my eye. No. No. Ooh. Ooh. Am I blind? Huh. For once, I'm not gonna get more rice. <laughs> Pretty full. So yeah, that's my tips. I don't know if they're helpful. I'm not gonna sit here and BS you and be like, as long as you put your mind to it, you can do anything. Cause you know that ain't true. Call me a bitter old lady, but that's not true, okay? There's a lot of people that put a lot of effort into things and they may not succeed, but that's okay. If we succeed at everything we did in life, it would not make life interesting and it would not make our successes as meaningful and rewarding, okay? There's certain things that we're good at and there's certain things we're not good at. You know what I'm not good at? Sports. I suck at sports, okay? I was always picked last at gym. <laughs> there's a lot of things I'm good at and I'm sure you guys have a lot of strengths as well. Actually, this would be a really nice way to end the mukbang. I want to know what are you really good at and what are you really bad at? <laughs> Let me know. Uh, you know what? I used to always call myself jack of all trades, master of none because I always felt like I was pretty good at a lot of things, but I was never really, really good at one thing. And it's still the case. <laughs> I'm a YouTuber, but does it mean I'm a really great videographer? No. Does it mean that I'm really, really, really great at video editing? No. Does it mean that I'm really, really great at taking photography? No. But am I semi-decent in all of those things? Yes. Can I get by? Yes. <laughs> so <laughs> that is it, guys. That is my mukbang. I pretty much finished everything other than these four peppers here, but I think I had enough pepper. <laughs> and of course, I'm not gonna finish this jar of kimchi in one sitting, okay? Requires at least three sittings. <laughs> That is it for my mukbang. I hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know down below. What are you good at? What are you bad at? Did you enjoy this mukbang? Did you find it helpful? Did you find it interesting? Let me know all of your beautiful comments down below. If you'd like to watch part one of my YouTube story, I will link that video down below as well as my mukbang playlist, which has all of my mukbang videos. If you guys enjoy mukbang videos, of course, don't forget to subscribe. If you like vegan content, don't forget to subscribe. And don't forget to, of course, join my mailing list if you are interested of course okay anyways thank you guys so much for watching i really truly appreciate your time i'll see you guys in my next video